Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful world in which we live. That's quite a scene behind me, isn't it? And it's been quite a ride to get here. I'm in northwestern France setting up a brand new photo biker workshop and this is going to be one, just one of the locations that we visit. I've been staying with my sister and her husband and Anna has been riding around with me showing me all sorts of interesting places that we can go. It's been quite a ride to get here. Check this out. See you later, Kev. On y va, Anna. Do you think I ought to fix Red X with the other stuff? Is the Red X the lead replacement or is it upper cylinder lubricant? Oh, oh Anna. And that is the great thing about France. All these little boulangeries with lots of tasty, lovely things to eat. Aren't they, Anna? Oh, yeah. And this will be home for this evening. Dump the bags off, then go and check out the Mont. Bonjour, bonjour. J'ai une réservation pour ce soir. Ok. Alors, vous voulez que je parle français? Or... Pardon, monsieur, mon français est très petit. So... <laughs> Avez-vous l'anglais? Ok, so let's do it. No, it's just that I saw you made an effort to speak in French when you I, came in. So... I do try, yeah. Voilà. So Merci, that, monsieur. Uh, Merci. As a lot of people are coming here saying they want to, to train their French. As... So I just need a, an ID to see if you are uh, yourself. See if I am an imposter. Driving license? Anything with uh, a picture of you. Okay, <laughs> you look like yourself. So right now I'm riding alone because Anna had to go do stuff, she used to go to work and all the rest of it. I'm here doing research and research is really important because that will tell you where to find the very best shots. The Mont Saint-Michel. Established in 708 AD, I believe, by a bishop whose name I cannot remember when he built the first sanctuary out on an unhospitable chunk of rock. And the Mont Saint Michel's history has been evolving for over 1,300 years since then. So let's go and take a look. How would you go about photographing such a thing as this?
I haven't been here for many years and it's looking a lot more complicated than the last time I was here. Then we just sort of drove down the causeway and you parked where you could. But I guess as everything else, it's getting more and more touristy. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Je veux un code. Uh, pardon, monsieur, mon français est très petit. Je veux code access. No. No. Booking, hotel, restaurant, camping. No. No. It's no longer possible to ride to the causeway. No. Okay. Pas problème, monsieur. Merci. Okay, so if you actually want to go down there now, you have to get a code from your hotel or an online booking thing, which I guess you have to pay for, which allows you to actually go down there. I haven't. Now we could go down there on the bus, but why don't we just think like photographers instead? Because if we think like photographers, we can start thinking, okay, where do we need to go? What can we do with this? Where can we get the best shot from? And I pretty much guarantee you, it won't be from the tourist car park. You bet your life there'll be a better view somewhere down there than there will up here. Now that's more interesting, isn't it? Straight away, imagine the view looking across these fields. I wonder if we can sneak into here, see what it looks like. Finding great photos, whoops, I shouldn't have gone in that way. This is the trouble in Europe, they're driving the wrong side of the road. No, it's not so good from here, but it is better from back there on the corner. So let's hang a Yui. It's not bad from that gateway, but I don't like that bush. And there's a big no entry sign there, which pretty much says, don't come in my field, because you imagine the farmer being swamped with tourists. But also the nice man at the hotel told me that there is a marae, a kind of like a beach marsh area over here behind these fields, which I'm sure there must be access to. And that, that area is going to be public access. Yeah, you see, now look, that's more interesting, isn't it? From somewhere around here, look at this gateway. Hanging over that gateway is not bad, don't like the scrubby bushes. This is thinking like a photographer. Taking a photograph can take what? A thousandth of a second. Finding the place to be to take the photograph from and the light to use when you do it, that can take just a little bit longer. Okay, I got an idea and I think that path we've just come past will lead us to something more interesting. But I quite like the thought of the view of go over across the top of these crops. So, let's go a little bit further on and see if there's a gap, a slightly higher bit of ground that we can shoot from. That looks quite good, but I'd like to be higher up. The light's not great because it's the light's coming from over there and it's hitting into it over here. Not ideal. I'll come back to you when I've found something I like a little more. So how do we go about this? But it's not the right time of day, really. The sun's right overhead. It's not great, but you may not be able to come here at the right time of day. Even with your phone, you could take a pretty good picture, but you need to be up high, which is why I stopped here. There's this little bank. If we look through the phone, if you saw an earlier video, you can pinch and zoom and pinch and zoom. Look, just sitting it down low at the bottom. Even if we go all the way zoomed as possible, I think it works really quite well like that. Now don't try and do a rule of thirds or something, it just looks contrived and silly. I'd keep it down low, focus on the Mont Saint-Michel by tapping and take the shot quickly. But if you've got a longer lens, that makes life even easier. 55 to 200, get up high and zoom it on in. If we sneak in that focal length, Keeping it in the middle, look, we can now start to bring it in a lot stronger. And I would position it very low in the frame. Make sure we are nice and sharp. I quite like that, looking across the fields of crops. What about exposure? Well, that's about what the light meter says is correct. I think it's too dark. I'm arguing with my light meter. I'm going a stop above, but the histogram says everything is good. Here we go. Perfect. You imagine how awesome that might look if the sun was setting behind it, if there was a stormy sky above it, but there isn't. Let's go and find 
a place where we might get something better a little bit later on. spent the rest of the day exploring, checking out locations. I've probably done another whoa, 120 miles. Look how much nicer the light is now, just riding down here. Everything just looks so much nicer because light is king. Light rules the roost. Light will make or break your pictures. And look, just coming down this back road, look, I found a whole new angle on the Mont Saint-Michel. There it is over there. And that was a total accident. I've never been down this road before. This is why it's so important to check out your locations. I'm going to just nip back up the road and have a closer look at this one. up here I think this is a really great angle it is a little bit different to what we usually see when you google the Mont Saint-Michel and see what sort of shots you get I think this looks great so how are we going to go about this well look everybody thinks landscape wide angle lens but I disagree because when you look at this with a wide angle lens you can't see the Mont Saint-Michel can you you can see lots of big round bales of straw if we extend the focal length a bit, things start to get a bit better. Of course, I'm still having trouble focusing. There we go. It looks better with a longer focal length than the wider. Yes, I know, it's all a little bit shadowy down in here, but I think it'll be okay. I will probably open up the aperture or something, put a little bit more light in there. Shame we don't have more detail in the sky, some clouds, the light coming underneath. It would look absolutely magnificent. But hey, you've just got to work with what you've got. Let's do a comparison. We'll try it with the focal length we just looked at, which is about 24 millimetres. Take the shot. I'm going to include a little bit of the bale on the left because I like the shadow. Where am I going to focus? I'm using f14. Let's go a little bit smaller. Give us a bit more depth of field. f16. Overexposing just a touch on what the camera wants. It's not bad with the Mont out there in the distance, but I do think it will look a lot better if we use a longer focal length. This is fun. Now let's see what we can play with. I think this looks a lot better. We're at about 55 millimeters. I'm ignoring that bale of straw now. We're just concentrating on the mont. Just looking straight down the valley there, I think it looks better. But if we sneak that focal length in still further, just concentrate on a few bales and the Mont Saint-Michel off there in the distance. I think that looks really, really cool. I'm gonna focus down there on those trees in the bottom of the valley. My histogram says the sky will be okay. The sky is kind of bright. It's a shame we don't have more detail in it, but hey, you just got to work with what you got. I think that looks pretty good. I'm overexposing by one stop from what the camera wants me to do. I'm going to do one more darker as well, just so you can see the difference. Here we go. Let's line that shot up and take it. I think that is the same composition. Now, why would I argue with the light meter? It's because the camera is looking at all that bright sky and it's going, that's too bright, I need to darken it. So therefore I'm going to argue with it because I actually want it to stay fairly bright. The camera doesn't know it's meant to be a bright sky. This is really important stuff for you to get your head around. Cameras don't always get it right. 
If you would like to learn about composition, light, why cameras get it wrong, what to do about it when they do get it wrong, the five camera controls you need, that there's only five, there is nothing more to it than that, despite all the bump your manufacturers put into your camera. Click the link in the top right of your screen right now, because I'm giving away seven free photography lessons from my Masterclass in Photography online course, which has got so many rave reviews. It's helped so many photographers just like you. Go and check out those seven free lessons. Find out what it's all about. And I hope you enrol on the course, because I know I can clarify a lot of mystery for you. I think we're going to have one more go at Mont Saint-Michel before call it a day. So as the sun is getting lower, why don't we have a go at shooting a picture? It has taken me a long time to find this little spot. Walking around, riding around, looking over hedges. But hey, here we are, we've got it. Now it would look absolutely amazing if we had more cloud in the sky, if we had water filling this in, because this time of year it's really bone dry. In this wonderful little sort of zigzaggy rill going across the fields. That would be fantastic. Nonetheless, let's take some pictures. I'm wearing my wide-ish angle lens. I'm at about, I don't know, 18, 20 millimeters at the moment. Let's have a look and I'll show you what I'm thinking about. I like having the sun and I like having the shape of the Mont Saint-Michel going on over here. We've got this little line running up here leading to it. We could probably just look straight along this get a bit more light that's quite nice isn't it just looking straight along at the mont maybe making the lens a little wider or a little longer i think it works better with the lens just a little longer something like that maybe move our bodies come down lower but you see what happens when you go down lower you start to lose these zigzaggy patterns you've got to stay upright it could be a question of turning the camera and tilting it down because that will really bring out that zigzag shape. I quite like it, something like that. Let's come back over here. I assume that my exposure is going to be 250 per second, f16, 250 ISO, and I'm wearing a 23mm lens. Nice, neat little off-the-shoulder number. Leading line on steroids, but I kind of like it. Let's come down here. Straight along that line. I'm focusing, oh, I don't know, about 32 feet in front of me. I think that looks good. We're going to do one more. The lens longer. I quite like this. And then finally, let's turn the camera up on end. and the sun's got just that hint lower still. So now the sun has just hit the fence post, we're going to give it one last go. We'll repeat those shots, we're still wearing that kind of 23 mil one. It's not bad though, is it? It's not bad. And then we'll do the vertical and see how that looks. was a lot more colour and some clouds and just a little bit of detail going on up there. So anyway, if it gets any more exciting, I will pop a picture on the end. Meanwhile, if you would like some regular photo challenges to keep you in the game to practice your creativity, then please click the little link popping up in the right hand corner of your screen right now. There is also a link in the description area below. Come and join in. It will help you improve your skills no end and it costs nothing. 
If you'd like to see more of my own photography, where I've been all over the world, as well as photo bikers, then please have a look at my clicker snap. It's on screen right now and also in the description, which goes with this video. And finally, if you've enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe because it will help me make more videos like this and just keep the whole ball rolling. I hope you've enjoyed riding around with me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.